Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get HomeKit devices working with Home Assistant and getting all of Home Assistant integrated into HomeKit. Of course, if you prefer a written version of this guide, you can head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description below. For those of you that have HomeKit devices, one of the troubles with Home Assistant is that sometimes the HomeKit only devices can't be added to both at the same time. This means that oftentimes you'll end up having to choose between the two different ecosystems, or you might end up having a fragmented smart home like many of us have. But there is a way to actually get the best of both worlds, and there's two different Home Assistant integrations that we're gonna to use to achieve this. Firstly, there's HomeKit Controller, which basically allows you to add HomeKit devices straight into Home Assistant. And then there's HomeKit Bridge, which basically works as a home bridge to add all of your home bridge devices into HomeKit. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do both of those, how to get your HomeKit only devices into Home Assistant, and then how to set up a HomeKit bridge to get all of your Home Assistant devices back into HomeKit. To follow along, all you will need is a running instance of Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi or computer or whatever, and you need some sort of HomeKit device and an iPhone or iPad or some Apple device that runs HomeKit. There are two steps involved to getting your HomeKit only devices into Home Assistant. Okay, so I'm gonna add a brand new device that I just reset, so it hasn't been connected to anything. It is, this is the faceplate to a KuGeek dimmer Wi-Fi HomeKit only light switch. We've got the HomeKit code back here. We're gonna add it to our home network. Now you wanna make sure you're on the 2.4 gigahertz network if you have uh, two separate networks because most of these devices only work with 2.4 gigahertz and not five. So we're gonna to go to our home app, hit plus, add accessory, and let's just go ahead and scan this code right here. There we go. Cool Geek Dimmer. Allow accessory, because now we're gonna add it to our network. This is the whole point of this, is just to add it to the network. We're gonna remove it almost immediately after. Cool, light location, doesn't matter. I'll just leave it a master bedroom. Light name, doesn't matter again. Continue, no automations for now, and done. We're gonna go do, let's do view and home. Yours might be a little bit different because this is iOS 14, but Kugi is now added, and that's what we want. And what we're gonna do actually, is just go all the way down to the bottom and remove accessory. Are you sure you wanna remove? and remove. Easy. Now it's added to the network, but it's now gonna be kind of in a pairing mode. So now when we go to our home bridge, put this down, or home assistant rather, I'm sorry. We can go to home assistant, have it load up, perfect. We're gonna to go to configuration, and then integrations, hit plus, and search for home kit. HomeKit controller is right there, and now it's gonna search for available devices. And if everything goes as it should, it should now show up with this device that I just paired, or rather added to my network. So let's see if we hit down here. Perfect, Cool Geek Dimmer, we've got that option right there. We're gonna select that and submit. And then you're gonna type in the pairing code. Now the pairing code is of course gonna be the HomeKit code that you have right there. So I'm gonna type mine in real quick. So 093390, oops. One thing you wanna make sure is to add the dashes. It doesn't automatically type in the dashes for you and they are required. And then submit. And happy days, that's it. It has been added. I'm gonna put this in my master bedroom because that's where it goes and finish. And now we can see here in HomeKit controller that we have three of the different devices. This is the one that I use as an example. Once you've got all of your devices into Home Assistant, now's the part where we actually set up Home Bridge. Now that we've added it, we can go to our configuration and we can go to our entities slash devices. It's gonna be here somewhere under K for QGeek. And here it is, the dimmer. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a new name and light, this is my closet light. I highly suggest giving unique IDs for your entities and everything because it just makes it a lot easier to identify. And update. Now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go to configuration and integrations. And you're gonna add a HomeKit bridge. 
So you're going to search for HomeKit, HomeKit Bridge, and you're going to get this and then auto start, that's fine. And then domains to include. And you're going to have all these different checkboxes. These are all the different types of entities essentially. Uh, by default, there will be a bunch selected like fan, maybe light, etc. Personally, I think you should unselect everything because it brings all those entities over and you might not want everything to come over. You might want only some things to come over. So unselect everything and then hit submit. I hit X because I already have it. Once it's there, you should have it loaded. Then you're going to go to your file editor. And then file editor, of course, you're going to go to your configuration file because that's where, well, everything lives in Home Assistant. And here's what it looks like. You're going to do HomeKit, Auto Start. I put True. It says to have it be false if you have any Z-Wave devices. And then you can use this little sort of automation to get everything up and running if you have Z-Wave devices. But this wouldn't auto start for me. And I just have auto start for true. And I haven't had any issues with my Z-Wave devices. Maybe if you have like a massive network, I've only got about four or five devices and they're all you know in close proximity. Um, but if you have a very large home with Z-Wave devices all over and it might actually take a while to establish the mesh network, then take a look at this and uh, play around with this if auto start isn't working properly for you. But what we are going to be interested in is right here, this filter. This filter is basically going to tell us how we want to select which entities we're going to bring over. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do include enti entities. You can do exclude entities. Um, you can do entire entity types. But honestly, for what I want to use it for, I found it to be easier to just write down the dozen or so devices that I want ported over and then I just wrote them out manually. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but ultimately it works really easily. So this is everything I have. I've got my ceiling lights, I've got an outlet, I've got my bathroom fan, you can provide it, etc, etc. If you don't want to list things out individually because maybe you want everything ported over and they're all, you know, um, it would take a long time to write everything. If you go to the HomeKit Bridge Home Assistant sort of page, it does give you some other options and it'll give you more information. So for example here, you got include entity globs and it'll give you all sorts of binary sensors uh, that are occupancy based and things like that. So you can kind of scroll down this and kind of, it'll tell you exactly how you can add things. And that's basically what I used to figure out what the best option was for me. So take a look at this if you want something a little bit more refined or a little bit more um, specific than what I did. I just did the entities and then I'd worry about all the different automations and everything at a later point. Once you have all of this written down, you can hit on save, file save successfully, go to configuration, check that everything is good and restart your Home Assistant. Once Home Assistant has restarted, you'll get a notification in the bottom left here and it'll have the giant QR code with the HomeKit, you know, six or eight digit code as well that you can scan with your phone. And that will add the whole bridge into your home app. And that's how you add it to your HomeKit. You pull out your iPhone or your iPad, whatever, and then you open up the home app, add new device, and then just scan that. And that will add a hub just like any other device. And then just go ahead and add all your, all your um, HomeKit devices give them a name, location, whatever. And there you have it, folks. You have now fully integrated your HomeKit only devices into Home Assistant, where they will mix and match with all of your non HomeKit devices. And then you've taken everything that you want and brought it back to HomeKit. And you have the best of both worlds. You get the local only sort of private access to your Home Assistant, and you get the benefit of using Siri and your iPhone for quick sort of toggling and scenes and stuff like that. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more content to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will help you out as much as I can. And until next time, see ya.